this is the first one, the rainwater harvesting. Uh, there's an example here from uh, India, where they have a quite a, a well-built uh, house, where they're collecting water from the roof, and it's running down into this big jar here of about one cubic meter, it's made of uh, cement. They're using the same jars here in Cambodia. Uh, the houses are much more simple. They are raised on stills probably uh, because of uh, floods. And um, here they are also collecting the water from the roof uh, in one gutter. You can see they're moving, it's very simple. They're, they're filling one, one jar here and then they're moving to the, onto the next one here. You can also, so that was some private ones. You can also have it institutional. Here is a, it's a school, I think, or another institution where, where the tank is much bigger and uh, very um, well built and uh, expensive to build. And you can also have it in plastic from a school in Ghana. And um, so these, these are some different, usually you, you you collect the water from the roof. You could have set up something uh, else, but um, but usually you use the roof that is uh, already present here. So what are the advantages? Can you tell me what, what's the advantages with the rainwater? Good quality, yeah. drinking water, yeah. It's close to the house. I mean, when we're using the roof, it means we're collecting it by the house. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's not exactly true because this one costs yeah. uh, something. So it's not necessarily a cheap, um, cheap thing because every household has to buy something like that. Disadvantages: no, no minerals in the water. It can be difficult to, to remove the soap from the hands afterwards. It only comes when it rains. You put it in a big tank. You need to keep the jar clean and you need to keep the roof clean because water it takes a lot of um, organic things from the trees and things and then it comes down and starts uh, com decomposing and it smells very bad so that's also something but you can if you keep it clean you can get a quite a nice water quality there are some system to remove the first flush or what they call but if you have dust on your roof after the dry season so you don't take the first part of it and so on the amount of water that you get that you can get depends on the size of the roof. I mean, there are two parameters here. There's the size of the roof, and there's the size of the container. And the size of the roof depends on how much water you can collect, and the size of the container contain de decides how long time you can you can save the water. So if you collect a, from a big roof, you can collect a lot of water. But if you only have a small container, it would be run full, and you would lose a lot of that water. So the, the, the idea is to, to find a good balance between the right size of the roof, which you may not determine, you may not decide because it depends on the size of the houses, but um, and then the, the size of the container. But in re, in the very short conclusion, um, I would say that the house, uh, rainwater harvesting is only for the rainy season. And a little bit more. It's it's talking about days. You you don't keep water. If you look at the size of this one, it's about let's say one cubic meter. And if you have a water consumption of 125 liters, like we talked about before, for a family, five people, 125 liters per person per day. No, per family per day. It's only water enough for for what seven days, seven eight days. Good. Moving on to rivers, they can look like this, with a bit of growth of uh, water hyacinth, I think, can be a big problem somewhere. Sometimes the river runs dry, and um, uh, in the dry season, uh, depends on the size and uh, the conditions here, and, some, and then you can often find the, some extra water by digging into the, into the river ground, because the water would be running uh, under the river also. So uh, often you can extend the, the water supply, but um, another surface water source here is uh, the pond. Um, this is an example from the northern Ghana, and um, you can see people are, are, are living here in a very remote area, and uh, the only water source they have is, is uh, this one that they, where they fetch the water. Uh, this is from West Bengal. 
and um, here they have they have constructed the ponds. The the other one was very natural, you can say. This is kind of constructed. They had a wetland and they were digging in and constructing some ponds and some other land that they can walk on. So you can see here they're using it for bathing. They're using it for washing utensils. Uh, they may be keeping fish in it. Here they are uh, trying to clean it with some uh, lime that would uh, uh, sediment all the particles and, and so on. There. What is the advantages of uh, surface water? It's easy to pick it up, so it's very much used. If you look at where is the big cities around the world placed, they're always at the near river, very often near river, because that's where you easily could get the water a long time ago at least. But it's uh, usually uh, dirty and you have, to, you have to treat it in order to use it, in, at least for drinking and cooking. But, but using it for bathing, using it for washing utensils, it's quite okay. Here's another one that looks a little bit um, like this. This is also from Ghana, from the northern part of Ghana, where they have um, protected, they have uh, built a dam, actually. All this uh, uh, soil here is, is, is a dam that they have built. They have a very short rainy season in the, in the northern part of Ghana, and um, they have to keep the water. And one way to store a lot of water is to build a, a dam. And you can see uh, it's very nicely built with a spillway here where the water can run out when it's too much, when it's raining too much and it's overflowing here. They have a, made a spillway so it doesn't destroy the, the sides of it here. Um, they have made even a very clever thing. I haven't seen it in other places in the world here. Outside in the middle of the dam, they are collecting water. There is a, there's just a pipe that is going down under the water, under the soil. And then it's ending up over here into something that looks like an, uh, uh, a dove well. But it, it, is, it is a well. It's built like a well, but it's connected to this water. So that means, and you can see they have barbed wire here around the, around the dam. So it means nobody is going into the dam. So they're preventing people from getting into the water. And that means that the water quality that they can get here is, is quite good. We, we, we did some... Uh, there's a student, a DTU student, um, back in 99, who, who did some measurements on this, and it was quite clean. I mean, it's surface water that we said before is, is dirty, but it's only dirty if, if it's polluted, if there's people going into it and using it, people living upstream to the river. Otherwise, it can be quite, uh, quite good quality, and it is in this case. It's not such a cheap solution. It, it costs a lot to build these big constructions, but it's simple. It, it stays all over the dry season, uh, so there may be some evaporation, but uh, but uh, it still is a way to keep a lot of water over many many, many months. In this case, uh, in in northern Ghana, where they also had other surface water sources like the um, dock wells uh, here. They would, they would be running dry. That layer of water would be running dry. But the, uh, but the big dam would be the one that was staying all through the dry season.